Hi guys, Cletus here with Get Out. Today, I'm gonna show you the best way to load, unload, and turn your trailer into a motorcycle hauling fool. Stay with me right here on Get Out. All right, guys, what I have here is a normal 12 foot flatbed trailer with a fold down ramp. Now I got the kind where I can actually fold this ramp down whenever I don't have a full load or have something short enough up front where I can keep that down, which allows me to get better fuel economy while I'm driving. This is just a stag trailer. I got a great deal on it. It's a 2023. The reason I went with 12 foot was because uh, my bikes are a little bit over seven foot long and with the gate folded down um, That gives me enough room to fold that down instead of scraping a bike as it's going down or not being able to fold it down at all and Also, sometimes I like to go kayaking as you know And I can also haul a bike a couple of kayaks and a lot of extra gear on this 12 foot trailer 10 was just a little too short for me and I dang sure didn't need a 14 foot trailer because I am pulling it with a ridge line and I can only haul about 5,000 pounds. But when I do haul around 5,000 pounds, the ridge line does a great job. So I'm gonna show you how to turn this into a motorcycle hauling fool. Let's get to it. I chose a set of trackside stands because basically if, if I wanted to store it in the garage over winter, I didn't want to keep it on the kickstand, I could just pull it right in here, flat on the ground, that bike's not gonna go anywhere. But I've also got mounting holes that I can place these on the trailer. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that. So if you'd wanna go on a motorcycle trip and take one or two bikes, you've got that option. So this is pretty simple. Um, on a trailer, of course, if you're gonna haul two bikes, you're gonna want about even weight dis distribution on your trailer so it doesn't get all wonky on you on a long trip. So I've noticed that on, at least on this stag trailer, these front bars are perfect placing for me wanting to haul two bikes. So whenever I get both bikes on here, I got my weight evenly distributed over the trailer and it pulls wonderful. I just got back from a trip in Southern Missouri and that was about 300 miles both ways. And it, uh, it did a fantastic job hauling both uh, street bikes on here. So then what you're gonna wanna do next, mine have half inch holes in here. So for two bikes, you know, obviously I said I'm gonna put them both in front of the um, support of the trailer. I just take my half inch drill bit and I drill right down through each hole here. I use three, there's actually four holes, but I just use three of those holes. And go pick you up some three and a half inch bolts that you can put through there and some nuts. I also went ahead and uh, drilled through these for a cotter key. So if I wanted quick release brackets, I could just pop that cotter key out, drop the bolt and take these things off of there or move them. And uh, I will tell you, I went through about seven metal bits trying to drill through this bolt. So if you could find bolts that already have cotter key holes, that would be fantastic. But what I've also done, sometimes I just want to haul one bike. And so I found near center, but I also didn't want to have to remove my my other one, if I was just wanting to haul one, I just would move one of these over. So I drilled a third set of holes using the hole uh, that I had already pre-drilled for the one on the right hand side. That way I can just slide that back and forth and I can haul whether one bike or two bikes. So that made that very, very nice. But I'm going to go ahead and slide it back over here. I'm going to go ahead and mount these in for you. Okay, we'll just get this last one bolted down here. And when you're drilling through, make sure that you watch where that light uh, cable is because you do not want to chop through that. Otherwise, you'll be causing yourself a lot more problems than what you need to cause. So, get this last one on here real quick. And of course, you can always use power tools, but this just makes it a little bit more fun. There, and we'll just slide in the cotter key for good measure. There we go.
Why use bike chocks? Well, it just makes your bike that much more stable uh, when you're hauling, especially if you're going to haul a long distance. And so now we come to the tying it down portion. And if you're on a road bike, you've got this spot right here. So you don't want to compress your shocks if you don't have to. And so what I like to do is get a nice sturdy strap. This isn't the sturdiest one you can buy, but it works for our purposes. So I just feed it right through the shock and the fender there. And you're going to want to wrap it back around and not compress your brake cable because you don't want to get that in there. Now you can tie it directly to the, the track stand, but I like to secure it more to the trailer and also just help, help keep that stand uh, from just getting wonky at all. And then you can just ratchet that one snug and you'll do the same thing on the other side. And you can either take that second one to the other track stand if you wish, or just find you a point down here in the middle uh, to tr also try to secure it to the trailer. That's the front. I typically like to maintain at least three points of contact. So I've got one on both sides of the fork up front. And back here, I'm just gonna try to keep this back from jumping and wandering around as I'm going down the road. So what I'm gonna do is try to get to the frame underneath the exhaust here. So make sure the bike is cool before you try to do this. And if you can get that spot underneath the frame, get around that and come right down here to this point here. There we go. If you can get one to run to the other side, that's great. If I've got two bikes on here, a lot of times I'll just go between both wheels and pull it forward. That way it's not hopping around on me. So that's how you can tie down your motorcycle once it's in the shop.